You're listening to the Crystal Clarity Podcast. Today's episode is all about unkinking that hose that is stopping or pinching the flow of grace in your life and the flow of grace that is coming from heaven, coming from earth, coming from the nature all around you. This episode is all about unblocking those chakras, letting them all receive this tremendous grace. It's all about surrendering to all of the things that you don't have to earn, all of the things that can be easy, all of the miracles that are all around you. And it calls in one very beautiful, elegant, rich, rich stone, which is lapis lazuli. So let's pull together the link between lapis lazuli and this divine quality of the primary qualities of the divine, which is grace. And I think after the episode, you'll have a really good sense of when to get someone a lapis lazuli ring, when to put it on them before bed, when to make them a lapis lazuli anointing oil or weave some lapis lazuli stones into their next birthday card. Um, So let's dive in. Welcome to the Crystal Clarity Podcast. It's time to settle in once again with the stones. Together, we'll illuminate stones in healing and spiritual alchemy, and then go beyond, exploring land healing, earth grids, sacred sites, and all rocks in the wild. My name is Sarah Thomas. I'm a healer, educator, and an expert in the field of ancient stone medicine and future crystal technologies that heal and awaken. All right, let's relax into some crystal clarity. Well, check this out. The extensive knowledge shared in this course has been mind-blowing. I have always been avoidant of new age crystal descriptions because something didn't feel fully authentic to me. I signed up for Temple of Stone and my little world exploded. Stones finally aligned into the energy trainings and shamanic work I've done all my life. I always felt like I was missing something and now I have a strong supportive base to stand on in all of my healing work and my jewelry work. And and Apophilate sang to me throughout the entire course. What a joy. That was from Sheila, a, a trained stone medicine practitioner through Temple of Stone, our nine week live online training where you can learn the full Materia Medica of 27 stones and beyond, plus learn all kinds of mystical practices and ritual practices with stones that take you through a ceremonial arc, a ceremonial progression for yourself where you actually spiritually change. change. And the stones that you're studying, you're not just studying them, they're working with you. So for instance, when you go into week one in Temple of Stone, it's called burn the past and we start in week one by letting go of what's no longer serving with us and the first three stones that you study that week are actually doing that work on you to help you burn the past so it's an experience and it's full of knowledge and if you ever wanted to become a trained stone medicine practitioner crystal healer temple of stone is a wonderful way to do it so go to upperclarity.com upperclarity.com if you would like to join me in temple of stone you know today's episode i'm very excited about it because today's episode is about grace This episode is about grace. So I want to define grace and us all get on the same page. And then Lapis Lazuli is going to come shining and uplift us and just love on us from this place of grace. And grace is, let me just start by saying, I want to bring up this rags to riches concept. And you know, if you start from a really hard place and then you end up somewhere that's just full of riches and treasures. And I think of my little Chihuahua Maria, who I rescued from a hoarder situation. She came out of a trailer that had a hundred other dogs in it. And she came to me, she was already old. She was already gray. She was blind. She had a lot of health problems and she had been living in these like horrible, horrible conditions for who knows, maybe her entire life. And she was losing her hair. I mean, it it was a sad situation, but we fell immediately in love and smiles on our face from the first day. And you know, within, by the next day, she's eating incredible food and toys and balls and like 20 beds around the house and in my arms all the time. And it's like, she went from 
rags to riches. You know, she landed in the lap of the divine from her little perspective. I mean, everything in the house smelled probably a million times better than it smelled in that trailer. She had all the food she wanted and she just had complete safety. And it was just like something happened in her life where she just, she got hit by grace. You know, it's just grace. And when we have grace come into our lives like this, it's what grace really is, is this opportunity to receive. And it's, it's this big opportunity to receive because a lot comes to you. And it's time to just receive that love and receive those blessings and receive those miracles. My mom just went to a, uh, a retreat with her church and she didn't really know what she was getting into. And she got there and it was the pastor's wife that ran the retreat. And she got there and it turned out to be all about, the only thing it was about was God's love. And it was about receiving God's love. So they got there and it was a surprise giant banquet of food was laid out for them. Like incredible, like she said she felt like royalty. It's like rags to riches, right? It's like she walked into that room. Royalty is another big word that's going to come up a lot around lapis lazuli. She walked into that room and there's grapes and cheeses and fruits and chocolates and all these things. And she was like, I was overwhelmed. Like I couldn't believe they set that all up for us. And, and you know, a tear came to her eye. It's like, and there's beautiful music and then they all get like this and they get massages and they get, and she didn't know it was going to just be all about receiving the love of God. It was all about grace. So that pastor's wife was like, this weekend is just all about grace. and It's all about receiving, you know, grace showers down on us and it doesn't have to be earned. That's what grace is. It's free. It showers onto us. It's like, have you ever had to do anything to make the rain rain? And no, it just, it just hits you. Have you ever had to do anything at all or been enough to make the sun shine? No, the sun just shines on you. It's free. You don't have to earn it. It's tremendous, tremendous love. You don't have to be good enough for grace. That's the definition of grace. You don't have to be good enough for it. It's just loving you. It's given freely. And it is a perfect whole reflection of the divine. Grace is a reflection of the divine. It's a primary quality of the divine because the divine, however you see that in your life, however you see what the divine is, the divine is connected to infinity, to eternal life. It's eternal energy. It's complete, pure abundance, and it has so much to give. And, you know, I was, I was actually meditating this morning, and I was thinking about some things as I was getting started, and this, this thought just came into my head. It was like, what if you're already good enough? Because I was going through some, I was trying to be good enough, you know? My mind, myself, it was trying to be good enough to get something started. And I didn't realize that was doing, but this, thank goodness for the grace, right, of this voice. It was like, what if you're already good enough? What would you do if you were already good enough? And everything shifted in my meditation. Everything shifted in my day because I sat there for a second and I like really took that seriously. What if I'm already good enough? What would I do? How would I be in this day if I was already good enough? And I relax and I start to receive the grace of who I already am, what is already available to me, you know, what what has already been so I don't have to earn it. I don't have to earn what's coming up in the day. You know, what if you're already good enough to start? What if you're already good enough to heal? What if you're already good enough to succeed? What if you're already good enough to be happy? What if you're already good enough to change? What if there's nothing that you even have to do? It's mind blowing to the Western mind and it is completely derailing to the self because the self or the mind feels like it always has to do enough and do enough and strive and strive and it will never be enough. This immense grace is so often forgotten about because the self or the mind is so loud. We forget about this immense grace. And some of my, the, the greatest teachers in my life, like the people that I consider so tapped into the divine, so connected to the divine, they help me remember. I mean, one of the main things that they've, they've shared and helped me remember is just allow the grace receive the grace, receive the grace. She has a lot to give. Receive the miracles, receive that this could just happen to you. Receive that this could be easy. Let that grace in like, like, you know, that sun is always shining on you. With grace, all you have to do is open to receive it. So grace is this powerful, magical quality of the divine that it allows us to know that things can happen easily. Things can happen without cultivation or hard work, you know? Things can happen without you having to earn it. It's just free. So how's the grace flowing in your life? Um, How's it flowing for you right now? Like, have you forgotten about 
the grace? Have you forgotten to receive all of the miracles and possibilities that are really just sitting, sitting there waiting for you to open to them? When you're asking yourself, how's the grace flowing in your life? And if you see someone where that is, is a little bit stuck, you know, they're, they're in that loop of like, I have to suffer to transcend. You might start to open up the grace portals with lapis lazuli. Lapis lazuli always comes in with this beautiful message of surrender to grace. Just surrender to it. You know, it's all around you. So just surrender to it and let it in. It is truly one of the major qualities and attributes of the divine and not just the divine as we think of it like in heaven, but the divine that is the earth. I mean, the earth feeds all of us every single day. The grace coming from the earth is immeasurable. So open your body, open all seven chakras to receive that grace. Lapis lazuli is like a stone that is going to bring you up to that beautiful possibility of receiving grace, receiving it easy in your life. I mean, it's kind of like lapis lazuli is the trigger for grace to flow. So if you put on that lapis lazuli ring or that jewelry or put it on somebody in treatment or put it on yourself before bed, it's the trigger for that grace to flow. And it it allows you to surrender to that grace and it reminds you of it. So, you know, when I was in um, Egypt, I was in a few museums and stuff and, and everything is lapis lazuli. It's lapis lazuli was huge on all of the royalty, right? All of the kings, all of the queens, everybody was wearing lapis lazuli. And then I was in India and all of the avatars, all of the riches, it's all lapis lazuli. Lapis lazuli is like saying, I'm receiving the grace of the divine. Like I'm allowing myself to sit not in rags anymore, but in riches. I'm allowing myself to be royal. And in China and Tibet and all around the world, lapis lazuli is there when we allow ourselves to receive the grace of the divine. And riches is really important. Riches is an important word. The color of lapis lazuli is so rich that rich blue. Imagine just finding that in the earth, that incredible blue. Like what a gift, what a precious treasure. And it, it's so precious that it didn't even need to be changed at all to become a paint pigment. It just became lapis lazuli paint pigment. And it's so rich that it was so prized and so beautiful, right? And it's so valued that painters back in the day, they would only have a tiny bit. They'd have to save up for a tiny bit of lapis lazuli paint pigment. And when you only had that very, very tiny bit, it was, you wouldn't, you would not paint your whole canvas with it. You would just save it for these little moments like, oh, I'm painting the Virgin Mary. I'm going to use, I'm going to use my last little bit of this to just paint this scarf around her neck or paint her blue eyes. So it was like saying, this is extremely valuable and I'm going to put put it on what is most valuable. When you put lapis lazuli on yourself, you're like saying, I'm valuable. I can receive blessings. I can receive miracles. I can I can allow myself to go from rags to riches. And lapis lazuli is, you know, anytime, just so you remember this, like anytime a stone is very rich, very rich in color, like sugalite can be a very rich color purple, for example. Cinnabar can be a very rich red. Hematite can be a very rich red. Gold is very rich. Anytime something has a really rich color, it's going to put richness into us. It's going to get, watermelon tourmaline can be so rich, right? The rich green and the rich watermelon, it it puts richness into us in the form of physical tonification or in the form of, you know, spiritual material richness. That richness of color is a translation of richness in us, you know, and what we all want in our lives. I mean, we all want a rich life. That's what we all, I don't care who you are, you want your life to be rich. And and it might be completely different what richness looks like to you to someone else. Like I know for my partner, like a rich day would be if she can sit and read her book in like the little nook of the couch and, and smell the pages of the book and read one book and then get out another book and just be in her world of books. Like that's so rich to her and to have the house be quiet. You know, that's a rich, for other people it might be, I love to, like I'm a teacher at a college and I go to the college campus and I'm around people and we're sharing ideas and that's really rich for some people. You know, I'm a Gemini. So that was my example. And other people might be like, you know, what what was so rich for me was that me and this crew like built this tree house together and just to see everybody working together like that was so rich. We want our lives to be rich. It's just different for for us, but that feeling of like oh my god, my life just feels rich like that felt that felt so nourishing, that felt so rich. You're going to get that from these rich stones, rich in color. Lapis lazuli is rich and it's very connected to the divine mother aspects of the divine, the divine mother aspects and the grace that flows from the divine mother. The grace that flows from the divine father is very connected to sunstone. 
And the Divine Father Grace is a lot about shifting our consciousness, waking us up, making us clear, you know, making us lucid. It's the Divine Father shares a lot of gifts of consciousness and grace around waking up, like consciousness activations, boons, blessings, you know, blessings on what we have, blessings on what we create, growing things like that. The Divine Mother um, and the grace that she shares can be a lot around material wealth, having enough to eat, having enough clothes, having enough shelter, elevating that to having wealth, to having riches, to having then prosperity, which is enough to give away, to share, to to take everybody like to Italy for the summer, to have that prosperity to give away, and then to into even just like pure pleasure. She loves to give pure pleasure like here's an incredible bath and incredible food and just receive like just receive pleasure pleasure of the senses so the divine mother giving that pleasure of that incredible beautiful stunning stone lapis lazuli that is that beautiful rich blue color i mean you could argue that it's just i mean some people say it's the most stunning color that the earth has made and then it has these gold which are pyrite, but these gold swirls around it, these swirls of, there's even some sodalite in lapis lazuli, which looks like, you know, it can look like there's some quartz in there sometimes. Lapis lazuli is a rock, by the way, so it's not one mineral. It's like full of different things, but it can look like the Milky Way galaxy is stretching across it. I mean, it looks like you're looking up at the night sky and you're seeing incredible glittering stars and you're seeing the the Milky Way galaxy stretched across the sky and just gold riches inside this beautiful blue. I mean, what can be more rich than that looking up and and it's like where we're receiving this heavenly grace from divine mother aspects of grace so connected to lapis lazuli divine father aspects of grace connected to lapis lazuli and also very connected to sunstone itself so wealth pleasure beauty rags to riches having enough having wealth having prosperity you know the divine mother i just I feel sometimes she's good, good Lord, just receive and enjoy it. You don't have to work so hard. That's, that's grace. Just receive and enjoy it. Like what would happen if you just let go and surrender? Like where, where could grace take you in your life? So, you know, when grace hits us, when we come up to conversations like this, like there's a place where I can lose some people when I talk about this, just, just letting things come and being worthy to receive all of this grace because the light of grace, the shower of grace is so strong that one of its superpowers is that it will illuminate the shame programs inside of you. It will illuminate the unworthiness programs inside of you. And it will illuminate like the I'm not good enough programs inside of you. And that's the beauty of grace because look how it's able to root those out and bring those into the light. To see is to be free. So when you see that unworthiness program, that's a giant part of the process just to see it. Some people would say it's the whole process, right? Just to see it is to be free of it. When you see that I'm not good enough program, that's a giant step. You should be cheering and celebrating like because just to see it, is, it, it means it's, it's moving through. Just to see it is moving through. So grace, lapis lazuli has a way of like bringing us up to face our shame and face our unworthiness, all of this not good enough stuff that's kind of embedded in the programming of the self. And that is the same for all of us. There's there's no self out there that doesn't have shame and unworthiness and not good enough move through it. It's, it can be to different degrees, but it is truly not personal to you. It's like a quality of the self itself, the one giant program that we're waking up to. So I would say that, you know, a wonderful time to bring out lapis lazuli is, is to say to someone, you know, anoint yourself with riches. Receive this love. Like, what if somebody gets an amazing partner and they're they're blocking it? Receive this love, you know. What if someone has this ability for something to be easy and they're blocking it? Just receive it. Somebody might be, you know, they're doing so well in their business or something, but they're just not receiving that piece that would allow them to you know, make money or make that change or get that first down payment on a house or whatever that is. Lapis Lazuli is the moment to say, just remember there's miracles. There's so much grace out there that you don't have to earn. You don't have to earn it. It's just coming. So like I said, open all seven chakras to receive that grace. (laughs) When I say that, you might feel a couple of the chakras that are like, wait, I'm not receiving that grace. You know, now that you've come to this episode and you've you've thought about this a little bit, you're going to start seeing lapis lazuli around and you're going to start noticing that it's always on riches and queens and in beautiful jewelry. And I hope that there is a moment for you to 
become conscious of that question that I asked in the middle of the episode, like how's the flow of grace going in your life? Are you allowing it to be easy? Are you allowing the divine to shine its love on you? Even just, are you receiving all of the energy that's in nature, that's all around you, that just wants to feed you, come up through the earth, come through the air? Are you receiving that? Are you letting that into your body? We have to wonder with these stones, did, did some human just pull out this stone and say, gosh, that's so beautiful. And then humans started making up this story about what this stone does. Or did this stone come up out of the earth with the transmission inside it, with a higher consciousness of receiving grace inside of it from the earth or from the celestial realms? And did that transmission hit us and start moving in us as we started to interact with this stone? Well, you've just got to wonder. Maybe it's our imaginations and maybe our imaginations are actually the same as these divine transmissions. Maybe it's all one. I wish you so much grace and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you liked today's episode, please like or subscribe. Oh, and leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you'd like to learn more about. To take the perfect stone medicine or crystal healing training for you, or to visit me at our super special crystal shop, go to upperclarity.com.